In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Anker F3000 power station against the EcoFlow Delta Pro. Now, the F3000 is, of course, a brand new power station, only been out for just a couple of months. The Delta Pro, on the other hand, has been out for almost four years. Normally, you would think new technology has got to be better, but in this case, I think by the end of this video, you might be surprised at the result. They both use lithium iron phosphate batteries. Both units have the exact same number of AC and USB outlets. They each have a cigarette plug. They've got Anderson power poles. They also both use a dual wheel design with a built-in trolley. They can be expanded to use additional batteries. Each can connect to a combiner unit, allowing these units to output not just 120 volt, but 240 volt as well. The street prices of each of these things is almost identical as well. They're about $1,600 right now, and both companies give you a five-year warranty. But now we get into the differences that you really won't notice just quickly looking at the outside of these things. The F3000 has a much smaller battery than the Delta Pro. It has a 3,072 watt hour battery, and the Delta Pro has a 3,600 watt hour battery. It's about 16% larger. The anchor uses a wide design where you'd place it against a wall, while the EcoFlow is designed to be kind of slid into a space that's been really popular in places like vans and campers. But one thing I notice when I flip each of these up on their back is that the little rubber feet on the bottom of the anchor are shockingly small, or only about the thickness of a quarter. The Delta Pro, on the other hand, has massive rubber feet on the bottom, and additionally, they've even placed a third, even though it's really unnecessary because those back wheels should support the weight. But I think with the EcoFlow, they did that in the event that the wheel broke or maybe something went wrong, it would have more room to balance. The EcoFlow design also uses very standardized cables. You'll find XT60 connectors for the solar, and I mentioned the Anderson power poles and all of the other ports, including the AC charging outlet, are just regular power cables that you probably already have. But the Anchor went another route. They created their own not only charging cables, but solar cables as well. Now recently I did a review where I showed you those solar cables, and they are actually really well made, and I think they're safer because they can't easily be removed. But I am not a fan of changing the AC charging cord. This is a standard 120 volt cord. Computers have been using this style connector for decades. I really don't like to see any power station companies changing this on their models, because if you lose this cord and you're away, you're never gonna find one of those locally. The F3000 also has a built-in LED light, which personally I almost never use, but that might be a feature that you're interested in. Additionally, it has a built-in UPS, though it has a slow switch over time, but about 20 milliseconds. Now that would be fine for an appliance, but you're certainly not gonna wanna use that on something like a computer. But now onto solar input. Now on the EcoFlow Delta Pro, using a single connector, they're able to input up to 1600 watts of solar energy. Now they have a pretty wide voltage range, so this is gonna work with most panels you already have. From a marketing perspective, Anker's solar input is better. It offers 2400 watts of solar charging. In reality, that solar input is done through two separate ports. Now if they were split evenly and they use the same style connector, it would actually be a really good thing. Instead, they use one proprietary port and the other is using a standard XT port as well. Where Anker is severely lacking is they do not offer an alternator charger. Now many people use these in built-in RVs and campers, so utilizing the $400 alternator charger EcoFlow has is huge. That means while you're driving or simply running your engine, you can get a massive wow, amount of charging, and you can also combine solar charging with that at the same time. So in a mobile situation like a van or a camper, that is a huge advantage for the EcoFlow. In terms of AC output, they both work the same. They output 3,600 watts continuously. The big difference here is that Anchor does not publish their surge rating if there even is one, so I can only assume that it can only output 3,600 watts at all times. The Delta Pro can surge up to 7,200 watts. They also have that X-Boost function as well that can run resistance applications, things like heaters, at up to 4,500 watts. But the surge ability up to 7,200 watts can be huge for things like pumps starting up or compressors that might normally kick that anchor into an overload mode. So when we do a quick recap, both of these devices are very similar. The battery capacity of the Anker is smaller at 3,072 watt hours compared to the EcoFlow. Additionally, the Anker has more solar input charging ability, but that charging is a little bit convoluted and it is using proprietary cables. Both units are priced right around $1,600, so I think the really big difference up front is battery capacity. If you want to get the most capacity, and I think most people do, the EcoFlow will definitely be a clear winner. If you're someone that does not want to use proprietary cables at all, again, you'd probably be better off with the EcoFlow. I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you already own one of these? What was your experience? And would you buy one of those products again? Be sure to leave me a comment below, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel for more videos coming up.